Hello and good morning and welcome to our Trawley and Leyland Circuit Palm Sunday service. We hope you enjoyed our Passion Sunday service last week and it was good to get lots of positive comments. So I'm grateful to the circuit staff and stewards, our leadership team, who've contributed towards our Palm Sunday service. It is the start of Holy Week and we remember the crowds greeted Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem by pulling palm leaves from the trees and waving them and shouting Hosanna, praise him, save us Lord. So we're going to lay a couple of palm crosses at our Lenten cross this morning as we continue our journey through Holy Week. We're hoping that there will be little videos of meditations every day during Holy Week if you're able to connect with us on Facebook or through our YouTube channel, Trawley and Leyland Methodist Circuit. So we'll journey together and then there are special acts of worship and reflection on Good Friday and of course next Sunday, Easter Sunday. So we hope you'll be able to journey with us even though we can't meet together. Uh, we can be together like this and we're also making audio recordings of all of these services so if you know that there are people who cannot access what we're doing online do let us know and we will send them a cd so that they might be able to listen to it at home uh, during this act of worship carolyn hoversall is going to show us in our family activity how to make our own palm cross today out of a piece of paper and Reverend Tony is going to do a narrative sermon. Imagine what it must have been like to be part of the crowd on Palm Sunday, but also then throughout the week and Good Friday. But for now, at the start of our Palm Sunday service, let's hand over to Jula to lead us in our opening prayers. Give thanks to the Lord who alone is good, whose steadfast love is everlasting. Let the gates of righteousness be opened, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole Church throughout the world. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion this entry which began his saving work and follow him with a lively faith. United with him in his suffering on the cross May we share his resurrection and new life. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your Son and paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for what this day stands for, the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the rich truth that Jesus truly is our King of Kings. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give you praise and honor, for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship, for you are holy and just. We will declare that your love stands firm forever, for your loving kindness endures forever. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways. Your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous and you hear our prayers and know our hearts. Help us to stay strong and show to you. Help us not to follow after the voice of the crowds, but to press in close to you, to hear your whispers and seek after you alone. We praise you, we bless you, Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 
Now we are going to say the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm sure you will be familiar with the next hymn. Let us sing it together. St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21 The triumphant entry into Jerusalem As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. 
go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread those on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Usually on Palm Sunday, we would receive one of these palm crosses during our worship, but unfortunately we're not able to do that this year. But what we can do is make our own out of paper. They're simple enough to make and all we need is a strip of paper like this one. I've made this from two lengths of A4 paper and I've just glued it together in the middle. Perhaps if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to play this back once you've had time to prepare your own later. So let's start to make our cross. We're going to go about two centimetres up from the join where the paper joined and we're going to fold over our paper to make a 90 degree bend like this one here. We're then going to take the bottom and fold that upwards. Again, creating a 90 degree bend. And then turning that over, we're going to fold up again. So that we've created a lovely 90 degree bend. Our side piece is then going to come across the front And then we're going to slide it through the fold that we've just made and pull it through, all the way through, until we've created ourselves a little box which holds our 90 degree bend together. We're now going to create the arms of the cross. So we're going to take our side piece, slide it through, but this time we're not pulling all the way through, we're pulling until we've created what feels like just the right length for the arm of the cross. And we can squeeze that there and then take the other bit round the back and tuck that in until both of our arms are about the same length. We're now going to create the top of the cross because actually at the moment we're upside down. So we're going to turn this round and then we're going to take the bottom of the cross, which will be the top, and we're going to slide that through that gap there, pulling it through until it's about the same length as the arms and you'll see our cross is now upside down. We just have one little bit left, and that is to take the final part of our cross and just slide that up into the gap there and finish that off. And we've now created ourselves 
our own palm cross. Well, thank you very much, Carolyn. Now we know how to make our very own palm crosses. And if you did make one from that thin strip of two sheets of A4 stuck together, then in my reckoning, you've got, we've got room for another half a dozen of those strips or so, so you could make a few palm crosses. So you've got one not just for yourself, but maybe for other members of your family or neighbours or friends. Maybe you could decorate them uh, for this Easter. Anyway, today uh, is Palm Sunday. We think about the crowds who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, waving leaves from the palm trees, which is why we have palm crosses. Um, it is a big day. And it's a big day for donkeys. And some of you have met my donkey, Donkey O.T., before. But if you've not met him before, or even if you have, here he is, just to say a very quick hello to us on Palm Sunday. Um, here he is. Uh, good morning, get, good morning, donkey. Morning. Morning, Phil. Uh, yeah, good morning. How about saying good morning to everyone who's watching and enjoying uh, our worship this morning? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much, donkey. Now, it is a, a very important day for donkeys, isn't it? It is indeed. In some churches, they have a real live donkey in the car park. They do may be giving donkey rides out in the car park, but not today because no church services today. So we're all at home. So you've come to say hello, haven't you? I have. And um, when we think about Jesus riding into Jerusalem, he didn't ride on a big white stallion, a big horse like kings did in victory parades. He rode on a, on a donkey. Well, not even any old donkey. He rode on a baby donkey, a baby donkey. That must have looked a little bit strange. Anyway, um, a donkey is here. And you remember there's a very special word that the crowds were singing and chanting. What is that word? Do you remember? The word is Hosanna. Hosanna. It is a very, very special word. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a word of praise and adulation. It's like a big shout and a cheer. And it's, it's got something to do with being rescued or saved. So it's like, save us, Lord, rescuer. Here he comes, our rescuer, our saviour. So it's a very special word for us, isn't it? Hosanna. Yeah, it is. Hosanna, indeed. So we're going to sing a song. Oh, your ears flopped. Um, that says Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Oh, I know that song. Yeah, it's a great song. And we're going to sing it and use our sign language. So Donkey's just going to have a little sit down. See you later, Donkey. Bye. <laughs> there he is. Okay. So I'm going to do a little twist on the song that you probably know quite well. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising. Uh, we're going to say instead of in my heart, because we're thinking about being isolated, self-isolating in our homes, um, confined to our homes for this lengthy period of time, which is very strange. We're going to sing, give me joy in my home. Keep me praising. We're going to sing, give me peace in my home. Keep me loving. And we're going to sing, give me love in my home. Keep me serving. And the sign for Hosanna, it's, it's, a, it's a word we sing, so we use two fingers for our mouths. Sing Hosanna. Hosanna is three claps. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Are we ready? Let's give it a go. And uh, Don Quixote is just here. He sat listening. Here we go. Give me joy in my home, keep me praising. Give me joy in my home, I pray. Give me joy in my home, keep me praising. Keep me praising till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me peace in my home, keep me loving. Give me peace in my home, I pray. Give me peace in my home, keep me loving. Keep me loving till the break of day. 
Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. And give me love in my home, keep me serving. Give me love in my home, I pray. Give me love in my home, keep me serving. Keep me serving till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. There you go. Well done. Hosanna, the crowds shouted. And now we hand over to Tony, who's going to take us through a narrative sermon and think about what it must have been like to be part of the crowd on that day, Palm Sunday, 2,000 years ago. It's not often that we get any real celebrities coming down the road. OK, maybe celebrity is not the right word, but he was well known. I say was past tense, but I'm getting ahead of myself there. I'd heard about him from some of my friends who'd heard him speak and some friend of a friend reckoned he'd seen this Jesus perform a miracle, curing some blind man, Bartimaeus. But that was in Jericho, some way off, and well, you can't be sure unless you've seen it with your own eyes, can you? And that was what I intended to do, see this man with my own eyes. The priests were a bit confused by him. Oh, they knew all about this promised Messiah business. They quoted from their holy books about someone who was going to be the promised Messiah and put all our troubles to rest. He was going to be from the house of David, they said. And that sounded good. After all, you can't get much better king than David. OK, so he was a bit loose with his affections and getting a husband killed in battle so as he could have his wife was a bit, well questionable even if you're a king but he made our country great he was a leader with a record in battle he defeated our enemies shame some of the kings that came after him weren't quite so good look at us now romans everywhere running the show they allow us our priests but trust me the priests have to toe the line a bit to keep on the right side of the governor that boss man pilot our priests, as I said, well, were a bit mixed up over Jesus. Didn't seem to quite see him in the same way as we did. A few clever people went over to Jesus' side. Nicodemus, real clever bloke, that one. But the other rulers on the Serenadin were dead against, dead set against Jesus. Maybe under orders from the Romans. I don't know. Politics doesn't interest me. All I knew was that I wanted this Jesus to be like David and get rid of those Romans. At least give us something to be proud of again. That's why I was there, by the wayside, waving and shouting with the rest of the crowd. Not sure what I expected to see, really. Certainly not what I got. I'd have thought that he and his friends would have got him something a bit better than a young donkey. I mean a king on a donkey. Where was the great war horse? A chariot even. All we got was this bloke sitting on what looked like his friend's clothes, riding on a donkey. Didn't seem to bother him though. He was quite happy sitting there, smiling at the crowds, acknowledging our shouts of Hosanna. There's something about a crowd, isn't there? The way you get caught up in the emotion. You can't help yourself sometimes. You just do what everybody else is doing. Well, you do, don't you? Well, whatever it is, I did the same as the rest of them. I shouted Hosanna and waved my palm branch for all it was worth. He looked at me. I swear he did. Quite a moment. And I really did believe at that moment that here was someone special. There was just this certain something that was in his gaze, a steely determination, I suppose. He must have known what he was riding into. 
well, the place is always packed when it's Passover festival. He must have known that there were a lot of very powerful people who were not exactly going to welcome him into town. He threatened the status quo, didn't he? All the cosy little agreements between those in power to keep a lid on any signs of trouble. Keep the Romans happy and they'll let us get on with our own business. Don't make waves. Don't upset those in charge. So, causing a fuss in the temple the next day wasn't the greatest thing to do if you wanted to keep a bit of a low profile. Turning the tables on the money changers, well, that was bound to get the people riled. And the authorities. And to do it in the main temple. I didn't see it myself, of course. I was back home by then, but the news spread pretty quick. Well, it would, wouldn't it? It was a big deal. This was really rubbing the noses of the priests into the ground. So it was bound to happen. Certain powers had been out to get him for some time, and this was their chance, and they weren't going to mess up this time. Oh, no. So what happened was inevitable. Big fuss, lots of hearings before the religious court, backwards and forwards to Pilate. And it all ends up with a crowd again. Remember what I said about there being something about being in a crowd? Pretty straightforward choice, really. Normally I wouldn't have given Barabbas a chance. He'd made himself an enemy of the Romans. Some say he was part of some ultra-religious sect who were fighting a revolutionary war against the Romans. Don't know myself. As I said before, I keep out of politics. Keep my head down, keep my nose clean. But for whatever reason, the crowd got behind him. Some talk of the priests being among the crowds, egging them on to shout Barabbas. Me? I just went along with the crowd, didn't I? Like I said, you just get caught up in the mood of the crowd, go along with the majority. Makes life easy, doesn't it? Well, doesn't it? Don't say that I didn't feel just a little bit guilty. Cheering him like he was a hero one day, condemning him to death the next. OK, fine for you sitting there. What would you have done, eh? Chances are you'd have done the same. It's just easier. Go along with the majority. Be lost in the crowd and don't cause a fuss or stand out. Makes life easy. That's why I kept saying was. He's dead now, isn't he? Crucified. Not a nice way to go. Don't suppose any way to go is nice, but to hang there on a cross... Nails biting into your hands and feet as you struggle to breathe. The weight of your own body bearing down on those nails. Forcing yourself up on nails in your feet to breathe. The pain coursing through your body as every breath becomes more and more painful. Hanging there by the nails in your hands. More pain. No. No. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But we had the choice, didn't we? We all chose Barabbas. We all did. I was just one of many. I wouldn't have made any difference, would I? One voice among hundreds. Anyway, keep your head down. Don't make waves. Makes for an easy life. Trust me. And what of Jesus? Oh, give it a while. It'll all blow over. OK, so he made a bit of a mark for himself over the past three years and got a few people's noses. But he's just dead now. And mark my words, that's the last we'll hear of him. Oh, no doubt a few of his friends will make a bit of a fuss, but if they've got any sense, they'll keep a low profile and go back to their work and forget all about it. Keep their heads down. Makes for an easy life. Romans seem more concerned about it, though, with guards put on his tomb. <laughs> Can't see the point myself. Bloke's dead. And nobody comes back from the dead now, do they? Like I said, give it a while. It'll all be over. Trust me. Me? <laughs> I'll just slip back into the crowd if it's OK with you. Keep a low profile. Keep my nose clean. Makes for an easy life, you know. 
On Palm Sunday, we look ahead to the events of Holy Week and towards the cross of Good Friday. And we're going to use some of those Holy Week events to help us in our prayers for others. So let us pray. Today on Palm Sunday, we remember how the people lined the streets, shouting Hosanna and blessed is the King. They lay down their coats and palm branches to be walked on. Lord, may our praises ring out to you today. May our hearts be yours and may you deepen our commitment to you. During these difficult times, it can be so easy to see the negative, to focus only on the restrictions and what we can't do. But we thank you, God, that we can still worship. And we pray for all who are leading and taking part in worship today across our country and across the world. Lord, we ask your blessing on all who are continuing their path of discipleship through these different and challenging circumstances. We ask you to inspire, guide and lead us so that we can creatively continue to worship you and live for you and share your love with your world. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he went to the temple. The people had turned it into a marketplace. They were buying and selling, cheating people and making money out of their religion. Jesus upturned the tables in rage. Lord, we pray for all in business, especially in the challenging circumstances that we're currently facing. Grant them wisdom and compassion in their dealings with others, that they may not be driven by profits alone. We pray for companies trying to adopt new ways of helping others at this time, that you will inspire and guide their work. And for those who've been made redundant and all who are self-employed, Lord, give them strength and hope. We remember Jesus was anointed by a lady at a house in Bethany. She poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped it away with her hair. Some of the others criticised her and complained. Lord, we pray for all who face persecution for their faith, for their beliefs in what is right, and for all whose actions cause them to be criticised. We pray for those who have nothing and those who have lots. May we each be responsible stewards of what we have. May we learn to be grateful and what it means to be generous. Jesus arranged the Last Supper. He ate bread and drank wine and he washed his disciples' feet. Lord, we pray for all who live lives of service, whether paid or voluntary. We pray for all of our key workers who are risking their own safety to help others. Lord, watch over them and strengthen them. May each of us, like Jesus, learn to serve all in need, to be humble in our dealings with others, to be willing to share and to reach out in your name. May we reflect your light and love to others. Jesus took his disciples to Gethsemane. He went off to pray in anguish about what was to come. Lord, we pray for all who are anxious at this time all who are fearful of the future and all who are struggling mentally or physically, those who are bereaved and those who feel isolated and alone. Lord, we hold them before you and ask that they may know that you struggled and suffered too 
and that they will know that you are walking alongside them. Grant them your peace. And as we come to the cross on Good Friday, we remember your love, your sacrifice, your grace. Help us to hold the image of you on the cross very close to us this week as we journey through Holy Week in a very different way this year. But may the events of this week not lose their impact. May we each have a new experience of your love and what it truly means to know you, to believe in you and to live for you. In Jesus' name we bring all of these prayers. Amen. We're going to share in a final hymn now together. Please feel free to sing along. We hope you have enjoyed this service this morning and we're glad that you joined us. Thank you to all those who worked so hard to put the service together today. Um, there's a lot of work that went in and we're very grateful. Um, please join us again next Sunday, Easter Sunday morning at 1030 uh, as we'll have another service to offer you then. Uh, and we want to be with you on Easter Sunday. And there'll be other opportunities during Holy Week, meditations and different things that you can access as well. And please, if there's a concern that you have or a need of any kind, please let us know so that we can help you if we can. And now a blessing from Claire McBeath and Tim Presswood. May the blessing of God, who resides in our hopes and dreams, grant us peace. May the blessing of Jesus, who rides to wild acclaim and waving palm branches, Grant us peace. And may the blessing of the Spirit, who holds us through our fears and our nightmares, 
grant us peace. On this Palm Sunday, through the events of Holy Week, to the cross on Good Friday, and beyond, to look for the hopes and dreams that come on the dawning of the Easter Sunday morning.